Welcome, this is Unique Designs with 3dprodev.com. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of deriving a product from the IMVU catalog. So the first step that we're actually going to do is find the product that we want to derive from, download the templates, take those templates into Photoshop, then from Photoshop we'll create a high quality texture which we can reapply back to the derived product, then resubmit our own product into the IMVU catalog and have it up for sale. So the first step we want to do is go to shop and find a product. Now I know exactly what product I will be using which is uh, one of my own hoodies so I will search by creator switch this down to creator right here and I will use that hoodie. So the first thing we actually want to do is try the product out make sure that we like it make sure that the description actually matches what we see in the client. If the product has any triggers, oh, we want to test those out. Obviously, it's working fine. So it looks good. Let's actually go to the product page. We'll get there by clicking more information. One thing I must say is that we always want to check the derived tree. Okay, so we're looking at the derived tree for the hoodie. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that we always want to derive at the bottom of the chain. So in this case, we want to derive of a product that was directly made from IMVUing product. Uh, what sometimes people do is actually derive off of derive and they're actually paying that retail markup. You're trying to sell this product at the end of the day and if you're deriving off of derive, you're actually going to be passing that markup to your customers and you're not going to be competitive in the catalog. So with that being said, we'll go back to the hoodie. Okay, now it's time to get our templates. So um, what I do in cases like this mesh right here, more complicated meshes, I actually break it up into two materials. I provide three maps per material. So uh, the first one is actually a texture map. It's more of an example uh, than anything. It's just a reference. I mean, you're welcome to use it and tweak it, which some people do. But what's more important here is actually the shadow map. The shadow map, the correct name is a ambient occlusion map or AO map. And basically, it's just calculated shadows off the topology. So if you actually look at the templates, you could actually see that all that detail was actually modeled in. And that's what the, the 3D package does. It actually just generates that shadow information based on the topology of the mesh. So we're ready to download our four maps right here. We're going to download both shadows and both templates and take them to Photoshop. So I'm going to open these, save these out, which I already have, and I will meet you in Photoshop. Okay, now we're off to Photoshop, and this is where the real fun begins. So the first thing that we want to do is go to File, New. And we create a new 5x12 by 5x12 by by document. Hit OK. And this actually got created off screen, so I'll dock it up here. And the next thing that we want to do is go to File, Place, and we want to bring in our map. So the first map we want to do is bring in our shadow map. Hit Place. And let me zoom in here and show you what happened. Sometimes Photoshop and the Place command, they don't really mix well. And it's actually not placing it dead in the center of the document. but we can actually fix that. So we'll go to view, we'll hit snap, and with snap turned on, we'll just go ahead and nudge this up, and there it is. Now it's dead in the middle of the document. So we'll go ahead and right click this layer, and we'll rasterize it. And all this rasterizing is doing, it's making this layer from a smart object to a layer that we can actually edit. So we'll actually double click the background layer and turn this to an editable layer as well. I already have this light blue color selected, so I want to fill this background layer. So I'll hit Alt and Backspace to fill. And looks like nothing's really happened because this layer is still set to normal. As soon as we set it to multiply, our dark values will show through. And then they are. 
by hitting Alt and just dragging this up. And now I just duplicated this and actually duplicated the dark value. So um, I'll go ahead and bring this down a little bit because it's looking a little too strong. And there it is. The next thing that I want to do is bring in our templates. So go to File, Place Again, and we'll bring in the templates. And I hit Enter. It looks like this time uh, it brought it in the center of the document, so that's good. We'll go ahead and rasterize this. And just a side note, with dealing with templates, sometimes you might get a template that looks something like this. And this is pretty much the standard color for all uh, UV sets. It's this black background with white UVs. So what I do is I actually invert it for you. But if you ever get a map off from another product and it looks pretty much a black background with a white UV set, you can just go ahead and invert it by going to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. And that's actually the hotkey right there is Control i That's what I like to use. So you could either go through the image menu or you could just hit control i on it once you actually rasterize the layer and you'll be able to invert this image. The reason for inverting this is that once we set this to multiply, it'll actually show through. All the dark UV lines will show through whatever's underneath. So it makes it pretty easy to line things up this way. And the last thing I like to do with the templates is actually lock it. So once we have this lock, um, I'll actually want to put some text in the back of the hoodie. So I already have that ready. So I'll just go ahead and drag this in from another document. And we'll want to go ahead and scale this down. And if you hit Shift and Alt, it actually will scale uniformly from the middle or should I say from the pivot point. So wherever you got that pivot point, it will scale from that. So I'll go ahead and bring this all the way down, and I want this sitting pretty much in the back of the hoodie. Zoom in a little bit. I like to use the nudge command, which is actually um, using your, uh, your keyboard arrows. And that way we get a nice amount of control where we actually move our object at. So I'm happy with that. I hit enter. And I'm pretty much ready to save this. Before I save though, I want to go ahead and get rid of this, these UV lines. And I'll go to File, Save As, hit the JPEG option, and I'll just name it as Main Texture, and hit OK. I like to have my quality as high as possible. I hit OK again, and there it is. That's my first texture. Okay, so now we're ready to make our second texture. So we'll go ahead and create a new 5x12 for the second texture as well. Hit OK. Bring in our maps, file place. We'll bring the sleeve shadow map in first. Hit enter. Hit the move tool, zoom in. And we'll go ahead and snap it in place. Right click the layer and hit rasterize. And we'll go ahead and hit multiply. And then we'll hold down alt and move it up and duplicate the layer again and bring this opacity down to about 50%. Now we'll go ahead and double click this background layer, hit OK, make it an editable layer, and we'll go ahead and fill it. So hit Alt Backspace. Now it's filled. And lastly, we'll go ahead and bring in our template. So file, place, bring the sleeve UVs, hit enter, drag this all the way up, right click the layer, hit rasterize, and then go to multiply. Then we could actually lock the layer. We actually want to make this shirt right here, white, not light blue. So all we have to do is actually marquee select this. And we can just go ahead and delete this. Or we could fill it with a white color. Either or will work. 
So that looks pretty good. I'm actually ready to save this out. So I'll turn the UVs off, go to file, save as, go to JPEG. I'll name this sleeve texture. Hit OK. And there it is. Now we have both maps and we have our textures saved out. So we're ready to go ahead and bring these into the client and submit our product. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stop the video and I will meet you in part two of the tutorial.